Welcome to Scorched Earth and a general reading for the Sun of Leo, Sun, Moon or Ascendant for the month of April. I hope you are well. I'm using the Tarot of the Abyss for you today. So um, <clears throat> if the reading resonates and you'd like to go a little bit deeper, there is a link in the description box down here uh, that will take you to Vimeo. You can get that there. Um, obviously, if you support me on Patreon, you get access to that um, for no extra cost. So uh, there's like a shilling done for my Patreon. Let's move swiftly on. <clears throat> okay, three cards for Leo, please. Three cards for Leo. We have the Page of Wands in your recent past. Current energy for Leo, please. Oh, we have the Death card. <clears throat> Hmm, it's a card of Scorpio in the Major Arcana. <sighs> All change. And what's coming towards Leo in April, please. Got the Four of Pentacles. We did have the Ace of Cups, I noticed. Oh, it's gone. I've lost it. There it is. We had the Ace of Cups that flipped there. And I'm not surprised to see it at all. We have the Seven of Cups at the bottom of the deck. Oh, with the Ace of Cups directly behind it, actually. And so where there has been confusion and illusion, now we have a sense of kind of a breakthrough, a big breakthrough. It feels like you're being released here from your, uh, <clears throat> from your confinement, Leo. Let's just check which deck I'm using to clarify. Ah, it's the wild unknown. Right, let's have a look. Why is the page of wands here for Leo, please? Thank you. We have the Eight of Cups. Oh, goodness me. No, I'm not taking all of these, but I'll show you what there is. <laughs> There's the Knight of Swords and the Nine of Cups. We've got the Seven of seven of Swords and the Two of Cups. We've got the Lovers and we've got the uh, Seven of Pentacles there. That's few too many, so we're just going to pop those back in. Tell me about the page of ones, please. Thank you. We have the Magician. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Virgo or Gemini, depending on how you read the cards. Tell me about the death, please. Why is death here? Nine of Pentacles. There we are. And the Emperor. And tell me about the Four of Pentacles, please. We have the Two of Wands. Oh, shit. Just dropping cards everywhere. And that card's not even supposed to be in there. <clears throat> Tell me about the Four of Pentacles, please. We've got the Temperance card. There. All right. We've got the Ace of Wands at the bottom of the deck, absolutely confirming and validating this sense that <clears throat> everything's about to change for you here, Leo. So let's have a look at your recent past. We have the Page of Wands. Now, the Page of Wands, for me, is a precursor to movement. It's not movement itself. Um, you know, if movement is indicated by the bonfire, right, that is built over the course of the, the hierarchy of the one suit in this particular deck, then this is the preparatory stage, right? This is gathering all the kindling that you need and, you know, whatever you're going to use to start it. You don't put the big logs on yet. It's all about the preparation. It's all about the groundwork. But it is about the level of investment, the level of activity that you are putting into something. I, it, it is usually associated for me. It's this kind of frisson of, of, of excitement about something, right? Something's about to change. You're about to do something. But first, the groundwork needs to be laid. And what we have underneath here is the Eight of Cups and the Magician movement and we're seeing well, there's a lot of movement indicated here the eight of cups is a card that talks away it uh, talks about walking away from something that no longer serves you something that doesn't enrich you emotionally anymore and um, you notice that all of these cups are broken you know what they were designed to hold the emotion that they were designed to hold now they are no longer capable of doing so they, they can't exercise the function for which they were created and so what is the point of staying with those eight cups, there isn't one. And what we have then is is the act of moving away from something old and going towards something that does nourish us, that does enrich us emotionally, which is what we see in the nine of cups, right? That's sometimes called the wish card, but it's about the way in which you um, you take ownership 
of your emotional state. You also encourage those things that bring value into your life to come in. You know, it's, it's a kind of great gratitude as well, I feel. But <clears throat> it's about being grateful for what there is in the present. This is about moving away from what is in the present. So anything that you are emotionally attached to at this point is kind of, and that isn't serving you, that isn't giving you what you need, here is the point where you can start moving away from that. And like I said, this has happened in the recent past. And this, this could be in the last few days or it could be in the last few weeks. I would be surprised if it was much longer than that, to be honest. And it's here with the magician. And we notice that the magician is turning away from these eight cups, interestingly enough. The magician is all about manifestation. <clears throat> and what you are manifesting is something in front of you, not more of the same that has been behind you. I, you know, I said right initially right at the beginning of the reading that it felt like you were being released from the imprisonment that you have been in in the last year um, and that is absolutely validated by the presence of this card here right? it, this is about you starting to get a sense of that which you have been trying to manifest really coming towards you it's not quite here yet or it wasn't quite here yet because we're still in the preparatory stages of it but it's coming you know and when we move into your current energy we have death and we have all change you know this doesn't represent a physical death always I mean sometimes it can <clears throat> but mostly it talks about a transformation and it, it, it's a change of state so this could be your immediate environment and we could see potentially oh, we've got the nine of Pentacles and the Emperor under here we could have you changing your plans something you know something that you plan to do now you're going to do something else and it's probably happened quite swiftly or this could be talking about you you know this could be talking about the way that you are coming into the next stage of your life because it does feel like as you're emerging from what has been a very restrictive very confined period of time now things are starting to expand now things are starting to open up but you are approaching it differently to the way that you did before nine of pentacles talks about your resource management and so maybe you are needing to invest a little bit of money in something but certainly you're investing a lot of time and care and effort both into you and what is changing in front of you like it feels like things are kind of in flux but it, it feels like it's happening in a way that that is very positive for you it's not just change for the sake of change although god knows after the last year we probably would be happy about that well depends what it was i guess but this the the magician card is looking directly at death and it's like the change that you've been trying to manifest is now here it is now happening <coughs> And it feels like you're getting out in front of this, Leo. And it feels very comfortable for you to get out in front of it. Suddenly, finally, you feel like you are in control. You feel like it is worth making plans. It is worth strategizing because actually this is something that you can put your effort into and it will yield results now in a way that it hasn't been doing for the last year. Now, when we move to what April has in store for you. We have the Four of Pentacles here, and it's clarified by the Two of Wands and the Temperance card. So we have a crossroads coming up here. <clears throat> and it could be that you're dealing with a Sagittarius, and it might be that a Sagittarius has got a decision to make, or maybe you need to make a decision about a Sagittarius. Or this could be energetic. And it's like, now you're at a crossroads. What are you going to do differently? And what are you gonna hold on to? Leo because actually I think there's an awful lot of information in your head I think that you've let a lot of things go over the last year but what do you want to keep hold of right what is it that um, enables you to move forwards in not a stoic way exactly but glide more gracefully through life than it feels like you have done for the last year right the four of pentacles is, is what is being held on to but it's also conversely what is being released. So it's like, where are your priorities in April? Let's pull some more cards because I kind of rattled through this really, really fast. <clears throat> but I mean, the message was really clear, so there wasn't a lot of time needed to be spent on it. Tell me that's four pentacles, please. Thank you. There we go. We've got 
the Five of Pentacles and the Five of Cups. The Five of Pentacles is in the reverse. Thank you. And the Five of Cups, yeah, okay, this, this is all about the movement here in April for you. Um, we've got the Six of Swords at the bottom of the deck. So both cards that talk about moving away from a situation, Eight of Cups and the Six of Swords have appeared for you here. And it's baffling how many times that they turn up together. It's statistically improbable, but it happens nonetheless. <clears throat> All the time. We've got you moving on mentally, we've got you moving on emotionally too. And what has been difficult, where you have felt a lack, where you have felt like something was missing, or everything was missing, or potential was missing, like, it's showing up in the reverse now for you. And so, I mean, it can also be the fear of missing out on something, right? Now it seems that that's not going to happen. Now it feels like you are going to get the thing that you want. It's a very stabilizing um, behavior on this card to turn it the, the, the other way around. So what we've got here is kind of like, it's a bit muddled to be honest, because we've got these two fives. I feel like this one was the right way up, but I'm not sure, right? So we've got, uh, which thing do you want to hold on to? Do you want to hold on to, um, hold on to something, anything, or do you want to let it go? Right? The, the Five of Cups is a, is a card of, um, it's a card of grief and it's a card of loss. It's a card of holding on to things um, too tightly or being almost consumed by situations. Like, it, it actually feels to me like this is what you see in yourself now. This is what you have healed over the last year. So it's not about what you have and it's not about what you've lost. It's about you here and now. And knowing that actually you are never poor, you are never suffering, you never actually have... You never actually go without because the universe is always providing for you but it's providing at a level that you can accept it. So if you spent a lot of last year being all like, ah, about things, now it seems like you found an element of moderation, you found a middle road and you're kind of like, no, actually everything's okay. This is all good. <clears throat> and the Four of Pentacles is saying, I mean, you know, like that which you used to hold on to really, really hard now actually moves very easily from your grasp because what you've learned is something so much more important. This is Ace of Cups, this self-generating emotional stability, emotional capacity, almost, you know? <sighs> but it's interesting that it's come up here with this Crossroads card. And it's almost like you get to pick between the Five of Pentacles in reverse and the Five of Cups in the upright. And what you really need to be doing is just picking up one of those cups and going, this one's important. Nothing else. Because everything else belongs to the past. It belongs to an old story. It's really interesting the way that this Five of Cups is, um, is set up here. I, I don't know what all of this... Well, this, I've assumed that this was just kind of boulders on a shoreline before. But as I'm looking at it, what I'm seeing is, you know, film, like proper eight millimeter film. Sometimes it, it, it gets burned, right? We see it in the opening credits of things, right? And it? it gets burned and it, it sort of bubbles and it spreads. Like that's what it looks like to me here. It seems like April is a month where you get to choose to be completely different or to continue to be the same on a really, really fundamental level. This isn't just about your environment changing. This isn't just about you being a bit calmer in the face of adversity. There is a wholesale shift going on here and it's all absolutely revolving around what you choose to do next, how you choose to move next 
This is really interesting. I want to kind of pull this apart right here, but I'm going to have to do that over at the Vimeo. But just pull a couple more cards. Tell me about this crossroads. <sighs> yeah, I mean, the message is simply that it's the Five of Cups or the Sun. And I feel like there is a lot... <sighs> There's a lot here to assimilate over the last year. And maybe you haven't really had time to think about that. But in April, you will do. And you can completely shed the yoke of regret and sadness and things that consume you, grief almost, loss, whether these are things that you've had that you lost or, or things that you've never had and that have never really appeared for you as a possibility. And choose to live in the present. We've got the Sagittarian card of the Knight of Wands again here at the bottom of the deck. I think if you happen to be in a relationship with a Sagittarius, I think that this might be a... might be a period of time where a relationship really deepens, bond really, really deepens with that Sun card and the Ace of Cups and the Temperance card there too. But there are decisions to be made this month. And on the face of it, they appear to be fairly straightforward and fairly kind of 3D based actually, but there's so much more going on underneath personally. Like how many times have you died and been reborn, Leo? too many to count I think but the last vestiges of whatever the five of cups might mean to you here seems to be really showing itself to the sunlight to be removed this is a very intriguing reading <sighs> Five of Wands and the King of Swords and the Six of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. The message is the same over and over again. It's choose. You can choose to be conflicted. You can choose to be grief stricken. You can choose to be consumed by what you don't have or you can appreciate in the here and now what you absolutely do have and be filled up with that. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm going to leave it there, Leo. And I'm going to go over to Vimeo and I'm going to pull this apart a little bit more because I do feel like there's an awful lot going on underneath the surface here for such a very straightforward reading. So if you would like to join me over there, the link is in the description box. I think that this is a month of incredible spiritual transformation and personal transformation. But I think that it's one that sees itself play out through your your actions, what you choose to do, you know, what you feel. Because we've got these big major arcana energies peppered around here. You know, we've got the magician, we've got the death card, we've got the sun, we've got the temperance card. These are all extremely positive. Here are the positive things coming towards us. But then it's interspersed. Oh, we've also got the emperor as well. It's interspersed with actions, with with. Um, approaches from us and it feels like there's a wave of good fortune hitting you here Leo and maybe you might be inclined to second guess it or to not trust it but that would be repeating a pattern instead you seem to be being asked to to invest yourself fully in the present and choose to leave behind all of these energies of five that we have here. I mean, the only one that's missing is the five of, no, five of pentacles, five of cups, five of wands, is the five of swords, actually. Choosing to leave them behind entirely.
and step into who you were always supposed to be. Oh, intriguing. Right, like I said, I'm going to leave it there. <clears throat> I hope that this has made sense to you. If you would like to join me over at Vimeo, that's cool. If not, that's also cool. Uh, know that I love you all very, very much, and I will see you soon.